I'd like to call the meeting of the Board of Education to order. First item on the agenda is the invocation. Ms. Sethry. Good evening. Our thoughts and prayers go out to all of the victims of the Boston Marathon explosion. At this time, I would like to have a moment of silence. Thank you. Next, Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Blackstock, would you introduce uh, who will lead us in the pledge? Chairman Dobney, I'd like to introduce Deshaun White, who is here with his family, to lead us in the pledge this evening. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Deshaun. This month, our school spotlight is on Jarvisburg, and I'll turn it over to the principal, Mr. Blackstock. Hey, Chairman Domney, Superintendent Scholler, members of the board and staff of Kurt County Schools, I want to thank you for this opportunity to brag a little bit about the students and staff at Jarvisburg Elementary School. And Olivia and Deshaun, why don't you come on up? I want to start with a, a school song project that we did this year. Uh, and I want you to take one of these and pass them out to everybody, okay? You do it. We invited a clinician to come in from Stanton, Virginia, who worked with 20 of our second through fifth grade students in writing a school song. It was an interdisciplinary project where they wrote the words, the melody, and actually performed uh, a professional level recording that you're going to hear in just a few minutes of our school song. Uh, Deshaun is passing out uh, an advanced copy of our yearbook that Iris Meekins gave me permission to show you uh, that's going to feature the school song, but you notice right there under the cloud on the left, there's a QR code that we've put together so that you can scan that with your smartphone or other device and parents can do that and, you, and it takes you to the internet where you can play that song for anybody you want to whenever you want to. No. Um, but this was a project that uh, involved 20 of our students, again, from second through fifth grade, and they included, if you'll notice on there, our PBIS framework, the JAGS part at the bottom, join together, always positive, give respect, stay fit, safe. Every morning for our morning announcements, at the beginning of our awards assemblies, we sing this song, and uh, not only does it get kids standing up and doing some good physiological things for the brain and the body, but it also reminds them of our PBIS framework. Before we play the recording for you, I'm going to invite two of our new composers and residents to talk to you a little bit about their experience, starting with Deshaun White, followed by Olivia um, Williams. Hello, my name is Deshaun White, and I'm a fifth grader in Miss Heflin and Miss Williams' class. This year, I was selected to help write, sing, and perform the school song. Writing the school song was fun but difficult. We worked with other grade levels to come up with the lyrics. My name is Olivia Williams. I'm in the third grade of Miss Keenan's class. I was also chosen to write the school song. It was so much fun. I was lucky to be chosen because I'm part of school's history. <laughs> And we're getting, we're getting ready to cue that up. Um, Deb, if you can get us ready. One of the interesting things the clinician told the students that when they grow up and they get older and they get married and they have kids and their kids go to Jarvisburg Elementary School and sing the song, you can tell your kids, hey, yeah, I wrote that. <laughs> so if you can, I, well, I've got the control, don't I? At Jarvisburg Elementary School, our teachers are the <laughs> I'll, I'll talk over them. 
Um, but it really has just been a good opportunity for our school to develop some school spirit um, and again to review our PBIS framework. So we're going to let this play out. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce one of our excellent third grade teachers, Ms. Dana Newburn, to discuss a program with you that we just finished up before spring break. Right. I'm going to ask um, Sydney and Deshaun if they would come up, and Maxine and Griffin Stats also. And you're going to have to bear with me because I'm going to have to read to you. <laughs> well, go on, said the boy. Ride it. Ralph was ashamed to confess his ignorance. I don't know how to start it, he admitted. It's the first motorcycle I've ever had a chance to ride. You have to make a boy, I'm sorry, you have to make a noise, the boy explained matter-of-factly. These cars don't go unless you make a noise. In Beverly Cleary's The Mouse and the Motorcycle, who explains to Ralph how to make the motorcycle go? If you don't know, Ask the students at Jarvisburg Elementary School. Do y'all know? Who, who explains to him how to make the motorcycle go? Do you remember? Who tells Ralph how to do it? Keith. There you go. You might even ask their... <laughs> well, and that's part of it. You might even ask their bus drivers, parents, principal, cafeteria, workers, teachers, custodians, and even members of the maintenance department's floor crew. That's right. One School, One Book is a project inspired by our principal, Mr. Blackstock. Every family at Jarvisburg Elementary School was given the gift of a book to take home, read each night together. All of the staff was given the same gift. For three weeks before spring break, everyone read one chapter a night to prepare for discussion the following day. The journey began and books were delivered by Mr. Nevin Keenan on his motorcycle during a kickoff assembly. Ms. Sample read a trivia question each morning on the announcements. Students turned in responses for a chance to win a prize. Many prizes were awarded. And on the Friday before break, the American Legion had a motorcycle gang, for lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> they paraded their motorcycles in the bus parking lot for the whole school to see. Miss Rose Kelly even went for a ride. <laughs> it was a fantastic experience. We've asked a few students and parents and staff to share their thoughts of the experience with you. So first, I'm going to introduce Sydney. I'm Sydney MacDonald. I'm in the fifth grade in Ms. Heflin and Ms. Williams' room. We loved reading The Mouse and the Motorcycle. It was a great experience for our school. We made Twitter tweets to, about the book Mouse and the Motorcycle. Please pass these around as I speak. We developed our own website and chose characters from the book and thought, shared our thoughts. We created comic strips about the book, Mouse and Motorcycle, and adventures that Ralph could have went on or did go on. We also did Venn diagrams to compare ourselves to a character in the book, Mouse and Motorcycle. Please pass these around as I speak. One School, One Book was a great experience for our school. All right, next, Deshaun, are you going to say anything or are you just help us? All right, I'm Sammy Griffin staff. Love it. Thank you, good evening. Griffin, will you share what your favorite part of One Book, One School was, <coughs> please? My favorite part about the One School, One Book project was that the book was very action-filled and adventurous. And uh, my other favorite part was the trivia question that we did every day. 
Thank you, Griffin. And I love that because, as you all know, most students are on all different reading levels. It's rare that every student is going to have the same trivia question. And so that really gave them, I think, a strong sense of family. And from a parent perspective, that's what I would like to share with you. Everyone is coming and going, and life is so busy that really, unless I'm picking Griffin up from school, I don't get to see many parents. And if so, we really don't know for sure if we have something in common. This book gave us something in common. And nightly, since Griffin is in fourth grade and he's an independent reader, he goes to his room and he reads, and he does his reading response, and I don't have much to do with that because he is self-sufficient. However, that is a special time, as parents know, to read with their child. So this kind of um, encouraged me, gave me a little nudge to read with him every night. We were to partner read, and as you all know, as your kids get older, we don't have that time. <laughs> so anyway, this was, except for at Christmas or if I'm sharing an article with him, this gave me something to look forward to every single night <laughs> to read with him. So I hope that this is an annual project and from a parent perspective, sharing with my son. Oh, it was priceless. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to share a few final thoughts that have been shared with me. Miss Liz Cody eagerly read her book and quizzed her students each and every morning on the bus. She stopped by to tell me that um, her husband goes to Duke for treatment. Um, she was going to miss a day, so she prepared whoever was driving for her <laughs> to quiz her students to come to school the next oh, day so oh, that yeah. they would be ready for the trivia question. Um, it was also shared with me that there was a family with a fifth grade student and a second grade student. Um, they commented that this was the first family book that they had all actually read together, which I think is fantastic. Um, Mr. Blackstock shared with me that when um, the floor crew comes to do um, our floors every Thursday night, they saw the displays throughout the school, so they wanted to know what it was all about. And I don't know the gentleman's name, but I'm sorry. Elder, yeah. He got the book and read it so he could <laughs> find out what was going on. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> also, I had a parent, um, Amy Chrysler, when she came for parent conferences, her, she has a son in first grade and then, of course, one in third grade. Um, and she, first thing she wanted to know, not report card or grades or anything, she wanted to know when we were going to do another book. She said it was fantastic. Her first grader was trying to read to keep up with the third grade child, and then, of course, he was trying to outdo the first grader. She said it was fabulous. And she also said that um, she would buy a book for her family, and she'd be happy to donate mm -hmm. for any other family. So, uh, fantastic. <clears throat> um, Last thing I want to say is that we're discussing how to continue the program next year and build from it. Um, so we want to invite all of you guys, if you're interested, to participate, maybe discuss the book with yes. us and with the students. And thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you very much. I'm just going to call a quick audible because Ms. Kinzel wanted to say something. I just want to tell the board that this, we have worked with Title I funding for parent involvement for years and years and years. This was a project that was funded through Title I parent involvement money that rolls over from one year to the next. We have never had such an investment in time and parent involvement as this one project. And I want to give a huge, huge recognition to Steve Blackstock for taking a risk and doing this with his staff. He is encouraged now because of you can see the enthusiasm and the positive results and because of that and his networking with our other principals we have two other schools and I believe the kickoff at Millyock Elementary School was yesterday I could be wrong um, it might have been Monday but it was this week and Sharborough is getting ready uh, at some point and I know we're going to have more um, involvement like this and such a great use of funds. So uh, I just wanted to put that plug in for our Title I program and again to give a, a nice big pat in the back to Steve for bringing this to us.
I stopped down to Jarvisburg, it must have been, was it about a month ago, Steve? And was asking him, you know, what's all, you know, these pictures and that on the wall, and he started to explain to me what, you know, the one book, one school project was all about. And as I walked through the school, you could see outside of many teachers' classrooms where they had involved the book within many different curricular areas. And then he was telling me all the stories that Miss Newburn related and that. And I thought, you know, man, what a fantastic project for an entire school and all its employees to engage in. Mm -hmm. And I applaud you for doing that. Absolutely. And I'd also like to thank Griffin, Sydney, Deshaun, and Olivia for speaking with us tonight. And once again, thank you too, Ms. Newburn. Next, uh, student recognition, Napa Early College Sad Club, Ms. Davenport. Hi, we are officers and students with the JPNAP SAD Club. Please allow me to introduce myself. I am Miley Monez, the president. Um, our vice president, Sky Poshar, wasn't able to be here today. Our secretary is Nina Sands. Um, also, our treasurer, Ashley Vasco, was not able to make it today. And our media specialist is Ashley Dalton. We are under the advisement of Diane Davenport, a teacher of JPNAP. Tonight, we are here to announce the winners for an event we had held amongst all of our elementary schools during the month of February. A little background on the contest. Our local food lines graciously donated 300 paper grocery bags to our club to then distribute to the elementary school for decoration. Our club gave the students three themes to choose from for decorating their bags. Don't be a bully, no text is worth the risk, and seatbelts save lives. Our hope was to get the younger generation thinking about the consequences of doing or not doing such acts and raise awareness through all the schools in the process. We also wanted the kids to know that you can still be cool and do the right thing. The club awarded three winners at each school and then chose three overall for the whole county. We would like to recognize Sierra Whitehead who decorated her baggies in the theme No Text is Worth the Risk as our third place winner. If she could come up, accept her, accept her plaque and remain standing. Um, Mallory, Mallory Fields, who decorated her bag using the theme Seatbelt Save Lives as our second place winner. <laughs> and Kayla Pittman as our first place overall sad grocery bag decorating, <laughs> decorating winner who also used the theme Seatbelt Save Lives. Thank you for your time and a big thank you to all principals, teachers, and students that participated. Have a good night. <laughs> we get you one oh, picture. Yeah. Get everybody in one. <laughs> if you could stand behind us. There you go. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah, show us your bags. There you go. There we go. Home and have nice pictures. Two pictures. And they will also be receiving um, a T-shirt, a sad bracelet, certificate um, at their third nine weeks um, assembly, which these are the only three schools we haven't gotten to yet. So, uh, so that'll be in the next couple of weeks. Ms. Davenport, thank you very much for the work that you do with the uh, SAD Club and all the SAD Club members for what you do. And I'd like to congratulate all our uh, contest winners. Could all the contest winners come back up one more time and give your name, you know, into the microphone there? Ms. Kinzel, could you make sure they get up there? Because it was difficult to hear some of their names. Sierra Whitehead from, from 
Curry's Hug Elementary. Central? Central. Central. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's in Curry Tuck, we understand. <laughs> <laughs> Mallory Fields from Moyak Elementary. Thank you. <coughs> Kayla Pittman from Shawboro Elementary. Great. Thank you all once again. You did a great job. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to amend our agenda tonight and put the first reading of policy 8100 in the consent agenda. And I would also like to put up for approval Dominion North Carolina Power right away request and make that agenda item C2. Do I have a motion to amend the agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? I have a motion to second any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next on the agenda, we have reports from two of our student board members, and we'll start with Jonathan Jackson. Uh, yes, sir. At the high school yesterday, the men's track team won second place in their conference track meet, and the girls won first place, so congratulations to the whole track team. The men's baseball team won the spring Easter tournament against the Edenton Aces, and the softball team is also doing well with their latest victory over Pasco Tank yesterday. The men's tennis team is finishing their regular season this week with away games at First Flight and Cape Hatters on Thursday and Friday. Student government is holding their spirit week from April 29th to May 1st this year. Relay for Life will take place on May 4th and May 5th at the Currituck County High School track, so I encourage all of you to please come out and support Finding a Cure for Cancer. SATs will be administered on May 5th at the high school. Students can still sign up, but a late fee will be charged. AP exams, unfortunately, are quickly approaching <laughs> and they will be held at the Extension Center during the weeks of May 6th and May 13th. Now I'm going to pass it over to Thomas Poston. Thank you. Um, at Curtis County High School, the Beta Club and the Drama Club students will be helping out with the Putt-Putt to Prevent Polio event in affiliation with the local rota Rotary Clubs this Saturday, April 20th at Lost Treasure Putt-Putt Course in Kill Devil Hills. Um, prom at Curtis County High School will be next Saturday, April 27th. The theme this year is Dancing in the Moonlight, and tickets are on sale now. Students from both the early, early college and uh, Curtis County High School Science Olympiad teams placed in meddling positions with Kayla Messier and Marissa Brethwaite qualifying for the state competition at NC State University on April 27th. And the Curtis County High School FFA will be attending the Northeast Regional Rally next Friday, April 26th. Um, at the Early College, congratulations to Travis Wright-Nor and Sierra Choitino for qualifying for the state math competition. The Early College's prom will be held on Saturday, May 11th at the Curtuck County Extension Center. The Early College class of 2017 will contain around 84 students that they've accepted the offer to attend. And graduation for the Spartans will take place on May 24th at 7 p.m. Thank you. Jonathan Thomas, thank you. Next, uh, field trip request, Ms. Schuller. Yes, board members, we have four um, field trip requests. Craytech County High School has requested to attend Science Olympiad competition at NC State um, April 26th and 27th. Mayock Middle School will also attend Science Olympiad, um, same dates, April 26th and 27th. Craytech County High School AP U.S. government trip to Washington, D.C., May 19th through the 21st. And Curry Tuck County High School Sassy Retreat at ECU. Um, that's June 23rd through the 27th. Do these uh, requests all have the appropriate uh, chaperones? And they do. Okay, great. Any questions from the board? Do I have a motion that we approve the uh, field trips? Motion so. approved. Okay, to second. Second. Okay, I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Let me ask one question, uh, Superintendent Schuller. The SASE retreat that's past the regular school year, do we still have to approve something? Is that a school sanctioned? It is a school sanctioned event. That's student athletes um, at the high school, and it's, it is school sanctioned, so we do need to approve that. Okay, great. Okay, uh, next item, update on digital learning. Mr. O'Brien, our Chief Information Officer. Good evening. Last month I came and talked to you a little bit about our efforts to get more computing devices in the hands of students. And we talked about a 
an expanded pilot we were starting with Chromebooks. I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, we have uh, full s classroom sets of Chromebooks right now in seven classes, four at Curry Tech High School, two at Moyak Middle School, and one at Curry Tech Middle School. Um, keep in mind the Napa Early College is already one-to-one. -one. Those teachers have begun using the laptops um, in their classes. We've already had some training for those teachers. We've begun testing out some content management software so they can have all their courses online. We've also begun testing some monitoring software so that the teachers can see what the students are doing on the computers at all times. Uh, we did some training just yesterday and one of the teachers um, who couldn't be here tonight said um, that she was very pleased with the way things were going and said that this just changes everything. So again, the, the important thing is not the devices. The important thing is the way it changes instruction and the way it changes student learning. Ms. Schultz is from Curry Tuck County High School. She's a science teacher and she's one of the members of the pilot and I asked her to come and, and share some information. Hi, I'm so glad to share my experiences. I was really excited to get my application accepted. I felt like I had won the lottery. <laughs> um, my court sat in there like a big trophy. Um, and what I found is that um, my students are really engaged. They're excited about learning. They're making choices. They're taking ownership of how they learn and how they demonstrate what they've learned to me. My first lesson as we came back from our um, spring break, I thought for sure was a five-star lesson. If there was an award to be given, it would be for that lesson. <laughs> and not everybody gave me five stars. And I thought, what has gone on? So I do what I do as a teacher and I reflected, what did I need to do differently? And what that Chromebook allowed me to do is to differentiate real quickly for those students that needed something different. So uh, the differentiation is there. It's a, it's a technology tool that really engages students with those choices and it allows me to also differentiate for those students that may need more time. So I can go in and I can quickly um, create some formative assessment for them and I know quickly if everybody's on target um, do I need to provide some additional support if I need to um, give them more time I can embed that in there as a tool because there's timing I'm in control of that um, I've also given them new opportunities that haven't existed before and, and ways to demonstrate learning. You know, sometimes we have real tight constraints in the classroom on how we can demonstrate learning, and now it's really opened it up into a different world. And so I'm excited to see those products that they deliver. And they really have to work hard and be creative, and that's what they need for the workforce. That creativity is going to allow them to be successful in their businesses and, you know, in their furthering their education. Um, I figure I have two major tasks and that is one, to engage students, and two, to assess students. And with our new management systems that we have, it's gonna allow me to quickly assess and monitor student learning, and I'm definitely seeing this engagement with these students. Uh, we have tons of support. Um, I've already this week had a meeting with my uh, media specialist, Mary Simmons, at the high school. I've met with Kathy Blades, our county support. I've had a meeting with Paul O'Brien, and I've had um, training with DPI all this week. There is not a question I've had throughout this process that has not been answered. And I'm really excited about the new tools that I've been introduced to as well. And I appreciate your support in um, getting our students to um, to be able to experience this technology in a classroom in all of our schools. I know that um, we were also we had a chance to observe that one-on-one -on -one situation at JP Knapp, and that was definitely an experience that gave me the opportunity to kind of calm down. I thought, oh gosh, I really don't know what I'm in for. You know, when I started, you know, my teaching career, I was brought into a room and said, hey, here's the internet. Okay. And so it's been a learning experience for me and I found that it's a lot easier and my, ki my students are receptive and I just love it. And thank you. Great, thank you. Now you teach, is it physical science? Uh, this year I teach um, honors chemistry and physical science. I have all physical science this semester. So that's all of my um, assignments are for physical <laughs> science students. So I'm finding that um, they're able to do simulations online they're able to, um, you know, do some online lab activities. They're able to do some enrichment opportunities. I've had students that asked if they could do enrichment projects that I have never had asked <laughs> to do extra work, and I'm like, yeah. sure. <laughs> That's great. So it's it's exciting. Great, thank you. I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. Well, I've heard nothing but good things about the Chromebook. I mean, having an eighth grader at 
the uh, Curry Tuck Middle School. That's all she's talked about is having her Chromebook and what she could do, and, and couldn't wait till next year if they if we can go one on one with it. But they they were really impressed with it. Thank you. You want to tell just basically how many classrooms and teachers and that this Chromebook uh, project's affecting? Yes, sir. This project is affecting um, seven teachers right now, seven classrooms. And the, the card of Chromebook stays in that classroom all day. So that teacher knows that every day, every one of her students can use a, a computer throughout the whole period. So that teacher can count on it for planning and really look at ways to, to change instruction. Great. And most of the uh, programs in that are free that go along with the Chromebooks, right? A lot of it is, yes, sir. We talked about, I talked about a monitoring software that we're, we're piloting right now. There will be some cost associated with that, but one of the things that um, the folks at JP and App told me is that if you're going to do one-to-one, -one, you need to have a monitoring software. And we haven't been able to implement that fully at NAP, but um, this, this new program works well in the Chromebooks, and it, it kind of takes care of that issue. Again, this is a pilot. What we're hoping to do is see how many lessons we can learn from this and see if it's feasible to expand this pilot um, wider so that kids actually have their own device they can carry home. And if things go well, hopefully I can come back to you next month and give you my recommendation on that. Great. Any other board members have any questions of Mr. O'Brien? Have you seen any wear and tear on them? No, sir, not, not at this point. I, I had a question today. I was at the high school, and one of the teachers there um, had a concern about vandalism with, with these things. And I told him, I said, you know, one of the things to keep in mind is if we go one-to-one, -one, that device belongs to that child, it, or student, excuse me. It's checked out to that student. The student knows they're responsible for it. They pay an insurance fee. If there's damage, they pay for it. And so at the early college, we haven't seen vandalism. It just doesn't happen. You know, I heard someone say, nobody ever washes a, a, a rental car. But if the car belongs to you, you take care of it. And that's the, that's the beauty of having a one-to-one -one where each kid is responsible for their own device. Great. Any others? Thank you very much, Thank Mr. O'Brien. Okay, next item, 2013-14 uh, interim budget. Ms. Trussell, finance officer. Good evening. Uh, it is my recommendation that the Board of Education approve an amount equal to the 2012-2013 budget as an interim budget for 2013-14 until state, local, and federal allotments are finalized. Okay, do I have a motion that we approve the interim budget? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. And this is something we're required to do in order to continue uh, our budget because right now we have no idea the funding we're getting from the state and no idea the funding we're getting from the federal government. And it just so happens that, you know, the funding cycle is backwards when it comes to developing, you know, a budget for a school. We should know the federal, then the state, then the local, but it's not that way. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is Dominion North Carolina Power right-of-way request. Well, Dominion North Carolina Power is putting an additional transmission line that's going across the property at uh, Curry Tuck High School. And they really originally offered us, you know, X amount of dollars, and the school board turned it over to uh, Ms. Scholler to do negotiations with Dominion North Carolina Power. And I'll just have her expound on that. Okay. Um, board members, um, Dominion Power has agreed to pay $10,000 for the right-of-way, uh, the right-of-way outright. They have also offered to donate $20,000 to the school system, um, and we can use that money for any purpose as long as it benefits our students. And so I'm coming to you um, with approval of that offer. Great. $30,000 is not bad. <laughs> Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Next, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Nobody signed up for the public comment session, so we'll pass that. Information items. 
Uh, the next work session will be May 13th, 2013 at 4 o'clock in the Knapp Professional Learning Center. The next school board meeting will be May 13th, 2013 at 7 o'clock right here in the historic Craytuck County Courthouse. And the last information item, the board met in a work session today at 4. The items that we considered were the new central elementary parking and traffic pattern, which uh, will be uh, completed or started and completed in the summer of 2014 at no cost to the school system because DOT has a, an upgrade or has a program that they're going to donate the funds and that will eliminate all the, well there's three accesses right now that are very dangerous and that will eliminate them. Next we uh, had a report on security upgrades for the high school and middle school, uh, Craytuck Middle School, which the board approved. Uh, we reviewed the fund balance policy, first reading. We received a budget update from Ms. Trussell, the finance officer. Uh, we reviewed requests for proposals for auditing services. We had an initial report from Superintendent Scholler about the Dominion, North Carolina power easement that you just heard us uh, pass. We also received a port on, report on child nutrition inspection uh, that was conducted this year. The, we got glowing reports over. And we also approved, or, or yeah, we approved an early release recommended by Superintendent Scholler for Friday, May 24th, and that's prior to the uh, Memorial Day holiday. Okay, next item, board member comments, and I will start with uh, Ms. Etheridge. Yes, I was able to attend the musical Once Upon a Mattress, and I would like to congratulate the Drama Club and Buddy White and everyone that participated, especially our student board member, Thomas Poston. He did a wonderful job, and uh, the, the play was, was out of this world. Um, if you missed it, try to, try to go to the next one, but uh, they just do an awesome job. Thank you. Mr. Sons? Um this past month, I had a chance to go to Moyock Elementary School uh, where we had a regional competition with our elementary school kids. It was called a Math 24 competition. It was impressive. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows anything about Math 24, but they actually put a card down on the table, and I believe they have to be able to add, multiply, divide, subtract. I was lost. <laughs> These kids were good. I mean, you could tell they had practiced. Uh, I believe we had all of the schools from Currituck. I think there was one from Camden and maybe one from uh, Elizabeth City. And uh, Currituck took first, second, and third place. I was really impressed. Uh, I also saw Once Upon a Mattress. Ms. Etheridge and I had a chance to sit there and watch it. Buddy White, once again, has done a wonderful job. It was really, really good. I uh, had a chance to see our varsity baseball, the JV baseball. Curry Tuck Middle Baseball, Bayock Middle Baseball. Uh, I've been going to a lot of baseball games. Uh, if you get a chance, go out and see. If, like I said before, if the lights are on, stop by and see what's going on in our baseball fields. And softball. I've seen our girls softball play. Uh, we've got some really good athletes out there. Um, last but not least, if you, if you see anybody from our Boosters Club, give them a pat on the back. If you go to our concession stands, our Boosters Club, we're running the concession stands. These people are volunteers, and uh, they're really working hard for our kids. Thank you. Ms. Kraft? Yes. Um, I am a member of the Y and have been um, in the dressing room um, with the kindergartners. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an experience. <laughs> but um, what a wonderful program. And they're having so much fun. And when you go in the Y, um, they're making posters and, and uh, putting things and the why has put them up and show, shown them so that's really been good. Um, got to see my first lacrosse game. Um, we have a county league that um, uh, many of our high school um, boys are attending and I'm tell you what, <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> Giving sticks to, to uh, teenagers to, to <laughs> I don't know but they did well and and uh, are doing really well with that um, and as an avid reader I love 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 this Mr. Blackstock oh my gosh great book choice I loved it when I taught and certainly uh, still do one of my personal favorites and I definitely want to be involved when you do your next book thanks 
Miss <laughs> Kraft, when you were at the Y, did you see them work with the kindergarten students, giving them swimming lessons? No, but um, Patty Stark's granddaughter is my sweetheart, and um, I'm going to try to get there tomorrow because I guess that's the last day that they're going to do it. No, I was, I was where they're doing all the, <laughs> and Richard Wardle's there helping the boys. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Miss Gaddis? Well, I guess I'll echo in the, the musical. I also attended the musical. It was lovely. I talked to a lot of people that were in the audience. They all loved it. The only critic I found was my four-year-old, who was my date to the play. <laughs> and her only complaint was that she was not allowed to be on the stage with everyone else. So she actually performed in the aisle <laughs> along with the play and distracted most of the musicians that were playing at the bottom. <laughs> Um, but for those families that didn't make it out, the next time Mr. White and his Drama Club does another one, it's a family event. I mean, my four-year-old sat through the entire thing other than the dancing um, and loved every minute of it. So please bring everybody out. It's definitely something you should um, participate in. It's great. The only other thing I really have to say today, I appreciate all the board members. Um, you can see we're all wearing blue ribbons today. Well, maybe you can't over the um, <laughs> thing. But we're all wearing bu blue ribbons in support of um, April being National Child Abuse Awareness Month. Um, and we are supporting safe children and safe families. And we hope that everybody takes the time tonight to hug the children in their lives and remember them this month, that not everybody's as safe as our children may be. Great. Thank you. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I visited Jarvisburg and learned all about uh, one book, one uh, school project down there. Uh, also, since the last board meeting, I visited uh, Ag Day, which takes all the third graders in Curita County and takes them down to the rural center and teaches them all different types of uh, things about different animals, about different uh, safety uh, measures. The Wildlife Resources Commission was there. They, some of the kids got to shoot bow and arrows. Some got to fish while they were down there. And that was all coordinated by Missy Swain, our Creta County High School agriculture teacher. And I've asked that she do a presentation to the school board and the public, you know, before the end of the school year on that because it was just a, one great and phenomenal project. And with that, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Okay, we have five people that want to move <laughs> it. Do I have a second? <laughs> okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion. Motion approved, meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>